health for me just really means uh, being reflective and aware of my emotions on a daily basis, how I'm feeling in any given moment, um, some of the thoughts that are running through my head, and just trying to be aware of those things so that if I catch myself in a bad moment, hopefully I can do something to bring myself into a happier state of mind. Mental health to me is the plan that you come up with to take care of yourself, both physically and mentally, in dealing with the daily routines and stress that we endure on a daily basis. Hi Grizzlies. Speak up if you're worried about someone and seek help, offer support quickly and just be able to be respond and offer support, talk to them and just be kind to people. I would describe mental health as being how someone feels or what they're thinking about themselves, others, or their life circumstances. Mental health is one component of our overall health and should be treated the same way as our physical health. As a mom and also as an educator, mental health for me is about wellness rather than illness. I will always want to be part of the journey to wellness by being an active listener, a facilitator of information, a provider of support. I believe strongly that when we are actively engaged and listening uh, to those who are in need of support, uh, we can make a difference. It is by being unbiased, by being supportive, by being genuine. So for me, that's what mental health means. So what mental health means to me is, you know, it's it's hard for for people to completely feel perfect all of the time, um, myself included. And sometimes it's hard to feel good some of the time, but you just have to try to make the right choices and uh, do healthy things for yourself mentally and physically so that you can have healthy relationships and you can take care of those that are around you, whether it be animals or humans, um, but the, the creatures that depend on you. I really should take advice for my own mental health that I'm about to provide to you, but um, find a means to breathe whenever you can. Just close your eyes, breathe, find center. It's often the best way to get your emotions, your thoughts under control. When facing numerous tasks or when your mind becomes overwhelmed, it is necessary. You gotta stop, take a breath, clear your mind. And I know it's easier said than done, but sometimes if you focus on counting when you're breathing in and then you breathe out, try to have the number of seconds it takes to breathe in, have that same amount when you breathe out and actually count. And you'll notice that your nerves start to calm. And I know I'm not the only teacher who does this. There are a lot of other teachers who do too. So try it, practice it, do your breathing, count, see what happens. I know it's hard, but talking to people can often help you work through the problem. If it's bigger than that, get help from a doctor. I know that's hard and scary, but it's better than suffering. Um, five days a week, I like to work out, and that may include weightlifting, um, running trails with my German Shepherd. We like to run at least a 5K a week. Um, I train jujitsu, so I like to get in the gym and get a good sparring session in at least two times a week. And then I also play golf. It's important to learn how to be okay when you're not okay. I prioritize my own mental health by exercising, getting enough sleep every night, having a good support system around me that I can talk to, and I go to therapy. I try to get enough sleep and take care of my physical health. I try to walk it out, literally. I get outside if things put stress on my mental health. I also admit it when I need help with an emotional problem. So I've had lots of occasions when I've seen a therapist to help me put things into perspective. I love meditating, spending time alone in my head, um, quiet time with the lights out, uh, just closing my eyes. I love spending time with family and friends, golfing, going to amusement parks, getting out, taking a hike, um, excellent, excellent exercise. To practice self-care, I do a lot of things. I will speak to my therapist, I take time just to breathe, I eat well, I try to keep myself 
physically strong, I write, and I try to spend as much time as I can with the people I know love me. Um, by pretty much tackling all the problems that I, that I can tackle within my control, um, stuff that I find difficult that's kind of stressful, I normally take a break from it and come back to it with a better plan to be able to tackle that issue. A quick little tip that I learned um, from my own therapist, and that is if you're having a rough time and you need just a little bit of a restart, grab a mint. It helps your brain to recalculate. It helps you breathe in something that helps calm you, and it helps me. So I hope it can help you. key thing I think is to provide them with space, um, provide them with the opportunity to try to work through it, whatever they're going through themselves, um, and provide them with an opportunity to talk about it, so an ear, um, uh, opportunity to go talk to somebody else about it, whether it's peer counseling or whether it's another teacher or friends or family or some other professional, that sort of thing, and then um, kind of make their lives at uh, Los Osos a little bit more comfortable, um, a little bit more supportive, um, that feeling of being supportive. And then of course, uh, try to use as little judgment as possible vis-a-vis uh, -vis whatever they have going on. If you don't know what they have going on, so um, give them the space, um, support them in it, and do not be judgmental. I try to support my students' mental health by always being an active listener and creating a warm and welcoming environment in the classroom. And I also try to be engaged with as many students as possible in the classroom so that we can create a positive student-teacher relationship. We do verbal check-ins. We do, um, you know, on paper check-ins with them for SEL. It could be anything um, from telling me something that's going on that's going well in your life and then something that maybe you'd like to look differently right now. Um, we all have both of those things in our lives. Um, and then just creating a safe environment for my students is really important to me. I think that um, it's really important for us to come in and feel comfortable in a space where we can not only um, talk with our teachers, but also um, creating a space where they can chat with their, their peers as well and um, become connected um, with somebody else that they can maybe confide in later. Hello, Grizzlies. There are a number of different ways I support student wellness. I listen to students, I give them positive feedback, then I help them find the necessary resources that they need. I just try to impress upon students that I truly care about them by listening, by being patient, by being honest. Um, I don't always, I don't always succeed, but I, I try. I try to be open and inviting to students, meet them at the door every day. And I also create monthly student check-ins using Google Forms to check in on their well-being. I'm always here for the kids first. Um, the relationships that you develop with the students, I believe, is most important. Uh, that students got to know that they have a safe place and that you love them uh, before they can learn. I just want everyone to know, if you feel like you don't have a place on our campus, you absolutely have one in the choir hall. Even if you don't sing, you are welcome here. And in the words of Mr. Rogers, anything that is human is mentionable, and anything that is mentionable can be manageable.